I'm Jonathan Mickey, a Professor of Innovation and Knowledge Exchange and President of Kellogg College. I'm Andrew Martin. I'm Professor of System Security in the Computer Science Department in Oxford and a Fellow of Kellogg College. And Kellogg's formed a link collaboration with Bletchley Park, the code-breaking centre during the Second World War. Uh, and there's two main reasons for that. One is that although most of the people who worked at Bletchley Park were women, most of the code breakers were men. Uh, but one of the women code breakers, Joan Thursk, went on to be a very renowned uh, social um, economic historian who was made an honorary fellow of Kellogg College. Uh, and then secondly, uh, Professor Andrew Martin does take his students down there to see how it all began uh, at Bletchley. But Andrew, why, why do you do that? Why, why do you take your current students to Bletchley? Is there really a link between what happened then and what's going on now? There really is. Uh, Bletchley is an inspirational place. Not only was it the place where the first programmable electronic computer was ever put together and used in code breaking, the code breaking that took place there really is the beginning of a, of a whole lot of what we now study in cybersecurity. Second World War codes have a lot more in common with the codes and ciphers used today than they do of, say, the, the, those of the First World War. Even though computing and, and communication has moved on usually since then, that was the very first time that code breaking was done on an industrial scale. And the techniques of code breaking that were put in place there still have echoes in how people do cryptography today. Although today's communication seems far removed from what happened there, in fact, we know that the code breaking that took place at Bletchley Park really had a big impact on the course of the Second World War. And people today talk about information warfare or cyber war. And in a sense, it's got a great deal in common. If you can intercept someone else's communications and find out what they're saying, you can change their behavior. And today in cyberspace, it's the same kind of code breaking, the same kind of interception and changing of messages that really has the potential to disrupt communications. And as today we rely on everything being connected to the internet, you could really disrupt somebody's life, their country, their economic well-being so easily through the similar means. So there's a lot of lessons from that era for the students of today. So as part of our relationship, we do have a visiting fellow uh, at Kellogg from Bletchley Park. And I'm pleased to say the Bletchley Park visiting fellow is Turing. It's a Derma <laughs> Turing, who's the nephew of Alan Turing. And Professor Andrew Martin is a trustee at Bletchley Park. Um, can you say anything about what's happening at Bletchley Park at the moment? Mm. So Bletchley Park was nearly bulldozed in the 1990s to make way for a housing estate. But some innovative and, and far-thinking trustees saved it for the nation. And the last 20 or so years have been spent um, stabilizing the site and, and restoring it as a visitor attraction. And now it's doing really well in that. And there are so many new opportunities to use the facilities there for education. And so part of my role as, a, as an educationalist on the trust board is to help think about how the, how the story of Bletchley Park can be told not just to school children, but to the visitors who come every day, perhaps to professional communities, perhaps to, to academic visitors. So we take college students there uh, and help them to learn about the story, not just the code breaking, but also the social history and um, the, 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 the cultural impact of Bletchley Park as well. And I do have a personal interest in the link with Bletchley Park because my father, Donald Mickey, is one of the code breakers there who knew and worked with Alan Turing. Um, and he didn't say much about Bletchley Park because everyone who worked there signed the Official Secret Act and very few of them spoke about it until the 1980s or, or later. The one thing he did tell us was at school when we were taught that the computer was invented in 1948 by the Americans, that wasn't true, that it had been invented and was being used in 1943, the Colossus um, mm -hmm. machine at Bletchley Park. So at Bletchley Park, um, there's a Part of the mission is to do this educational program for all kinds of um, audiences. And one of the big things they do is a schools program. Um, lots of school children come to, the, come to Bletchley Park and see around the place, and then are given uh, an introduction to code breaking and see the real Enigma machine. And one of the recent innovations, which I think the park is keen to do more of, is taking, that in, or taking an Enigma machine out around the country 
and uh, doing demos in different places for groups that can't come to Bletchley Park. And that's one of the things we're doing in college as part of the Bletchley Park Week. Um, there's a team that will um, bring a, an authentic Second World War Enigma machine and show how it worked and how many million, 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 million combinations there were uh, and let the both some local school children and also some of our college students, I think, try the machine out, encrypt a message, and then discover they can decrypt it and uh, see really how it worked. Some of the other things happening during the Bletchley Park Week, I, I think there's a, there's a film being shown. The, the Oxford AI Society is doing something with us on, on the role of AI today. Um, we've got an excursion from the college, taking students, staff, fellows uh, to see Bletchley Park. One of my colleagues from computer science uh, with his students is doing a demonstration of the work they do with drones. Drones have become incredibly uh, topical as they've been stopping aircraft. The same kind of issues that we were talking about with cryptography uh, affect whether we can intercept and control other people's drones successfully, whether we can spot them, whether we can um, take them out before they uh, shut down air airports for a long time. One of the other big events in the week is a talk by Robert Hannigan, who used to be director of GCHQ. Uh, and he's the one who set up the UK's National Cyber Security Centre. He's going to talk about the, the relevance of Bletchley Park, uh, the sort of how, how you trace the line from the code breaking in the Second World War to the cyber security that affects everyone uh, in the world today. So we've got lots going on during the week. Um, many of the events have been set up for our students, but they're open to the general public. And we're really looking forward to being able to welcome all kinds of people in to learn about the relevance of Bletchley Park today at Kellogg College. Thank you very much.